Simones Jensen is an adventurer, a professional mountaineer, a former triathlete for the Danish national team, and a school teacher. He's also asthmatic. Mons is a person who loves to challenge himself to the limit of his potential. After being diagnosed with asthma, Mons refused to become a victim of his chronic disease. Instead, he wanted to set an example and inspire others, and the human potential does not have any boundaries. In 2004, Mons bicycled and ran from Denmark to Mount Everest Base Camp, a strenuous trip through 13 countries which he covered in 100 days. No other person in the world has achieved this before. Now Moans inspires people and leaders to fulfill their potential. Every once in a while we meet a person that you can connect with and they are like kindred spirits, somebody who is equally mad as I am. And uh, this week we were uh, presenting together at uh, TEDx in Dubai and I saw him and he started with I am crazy <laughs> and I'm saying I am mad and he's crazy and this was the most wonderful start. Uh, Mons Jensen is here all the way from Denmark uh, he now lives in Dubai and basically he has done some of the most amazing amazing things and he's here to talk to us about his insights, his experiences but most importantly about how he's making a difference and how he's just changing the world and how he connects with you. And uh, so today, uh, Mons, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank it's you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you for Thank you. inviting me. It, it was just such an inspiration uh, a few days ago. Uh, and likewise, <laughs> like you said, it's for me also to, to meet kindred spirits, you yeah. can feel, you know, oh, I have goosebumps. I, the, I mean, when you're saying that, yeah. I'm actually getting exactly because that. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, you're mad and I'm crazy, but it, it all boils up to, you know, just the same uh, idea that uh, we're really passionate about things and, and we are sticking out yeah. and, and pursuing our own paths yeah. in life uh, and being uh, as authentic as we can. Some people also say that you're lucky to, to find passions in life. Yes. And I think that's correct because I've known people who, who've been searching more or less their entire life and they haven't found it. So when I do motivational speaking, I, I often provoke. Uh, the audience saying, what do you do on, well, in Dubai it will be Sunday morning. Do you go to work or do you go on a mission? Yes. And the difference is passion. So, so I was diagnosed with asthma and, and at that point, you know, it's, it's a two-edged sword because on the one point it was a relief. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just being a chicken with no spine who couldn't handle pain. Yeah. It was actually something real. And then on the other hand, I had to realize that I've just been diagnosed with an illness that will probably follow me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. It's something inside you, I mean, what you're sharing is, is, is amazing, but what was that, the ignition, what, what ignited you? Because uh, well, I would you, say you, that if it was different things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my friends gave me a book at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Swede called Juran Krop, who uh, in 96 had cycled from Stockholm in Sweden uh, down to Everest Base Camp and had climbed Everest uh, without oxygen. And, and uh, all of a sudden, when, when I saw that, I had, th I had thought about you know, climbing Everest. I had never thought about transporting myself from my own country to base camp. But, but after reading that book, it's kind of materialized there. Mm -hmm. This is my big mission. I am a mountaineer of, uh, of a region. Of, I can't get any higher in this world. So I'll give you a good example. When you're standing at 8,500 meters on Everest, um, and you don't have anything but your own lungs without oxygen. You haven't slept for four days and you're so tired you don't really care whether you live or die. Um, there's going to be a little devil in the back of your head uh, asking you what on earth are you doing here. <laughs> yes. And that's understandable. Yeah. But the thing is, if, if, if when the question is asked and you can't, from your mental backpack, find the big why, yeah. you're going to turn around. So that's the thing. And the big why wouldn't come from external motivation. The big why would come from deep inside. What's yeah. in it for you? Yeah. What's your next peak, Mons? Where are you going? Yeah. I understand the lower risk, yeah. but, sure. but you've got a big heart. Yeah. You've got a big vision. You've got a lot of energy and experience. Um, What's the next peak? The, to be able to help other people who have their dreams, mm -hmm. who want to pursue their own Everest. And, and we have to remember that uh, an adventure is a subjective uh, uh, matter. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it with passion and, and you know you pursue your own Everest, meaning that you have some dr dreams and goals, uh, both for yourself and also hopefully for people around you. 
um, to, to be able to, to help those people, uh, giving them um, mentoring and, and coaching so that like, hopefully they can, you know, in that journey, maybe they can learn from me and not do the same mistakes that I did. What we need and what we want has been confused. Mm-hmm. We have to remember that we are creatures of nature. Uh, we are not made for sitting on a chair looking into a computer screen for 10 hours per day. We need to go out into nature. There's a reason why we call this body a motion apparatus. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, uh, it's not made for sitting still in inactivity. Yeah. Um, th- and that's the worst part, isn't it? For a human being, the easiest thing to do in any aspect of life is not do anything. Then if, if you want to feel bad, it's easy. Don't do anything. It'll come by itself. Yes. And, and that's the same thing if you look at a relationship. Mm-hmm. If you want your relationship to be bad, easy recipe. Don't do anything. Have a project that hopefully was, uh, um, you know, um, one of the stars that shows that, you know, the sky is not the limit. You yeah. can go in further. Um, so, so creating hope, you have to have, uh, you have to show things. That means walk and talk. Mm-hmm. You have to have the walk also. Talking is easy. You can tell anybody, oh, the sky is the limit. You're so special. Go and do it. Pursue it. But you also have to have a realistic take on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, also, I think that hope is the last thing that disappears from a human being. So if you don't have hope, then you're really in, a, in big trouble. Um, hope is also being aware of this, mm-hmm. the sinus curve. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be aware that adversity is part of life and it's a very important part of life. So that means when you go for your own dreams, then don't expect a paved road without any bumps and you'll have a tailwind all the way. That's not meant to be. If I look back at the things that I cherish the most, that I've accomplished, it's the things that I had to work the hardest to get. Any final advice that you would like to give to the millions of people who will be actually seeing Um, this? Yeah. You don't necessarily need the big achievements to mm-hmm. uh, to feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we should remember that we can find big miracles in s- small events. Yeah. So that means uh, open your eyes and, and focus on your journey as opposed to only the result you're aiming for. Because mm-hmm. if you do that for five years, um, you will have missed a lot of small uh, miracles. Yeah. So that's the thing. Focus on the journey and remember that's the real goal. And then in the end, you will uh, maybe you get 40 minutes on the summit, but you spent five years uh, getting there. Mm-hmm. And the five years is the platform for your learning and your growing. Uh, so remember that the small, uh, the big miracle and the small things. Deep honor. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm uh, honored to be here. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you.